Hello, welcome back to Lessons Learned. I'm Sherry and this is Finish It Friday where we see what I finished this week or what I worked on and what you finished as well. So this first part of the video will be things that I have done this week and the second part will be uh, submissions from you quilters out there who wanted to share your finishes whether it be a finished quilt top, a finished um, block, a, a completely quilted and everything finish, a table runner, a bed quilt, whatever, whatever you got out there. And so we have a few of those to share this week. And but first I'm going to get into what I did this week. And if you watched Wednesday's video, which was the uh, leftover jelly roll quilt, uh, an easy, quick little block. And that's this one right here. If you haven't seen that, go back and watch it. Uh, I had this background fabric and a line of leftover jelly roll scraps. And this is what I still have left over. And that's even after I added this border all the way around, which you didn't see that on my Wednesday video. So I went ahead and, and got that on there and that used up some of my leftover jelly roll strips and the rest of these i'm just going to hook them all together and include them on the back somehow so that will be one set of leftover jelly rolls out of my stash with that being said i have a little bit of a of a giveaway i mentioned in that video that this this is a bunch of leftover jelly rolls and a three yard piece, which is what you need to make a quilt with, left in my stash. And there's, I'm gonna say, I think there's about 30 in here. A jelly roll usually consists of 40 to 42. So evidently I just pulled a few colors out for something and then here's the rest of it. So uh, the first person that would like to have this set of fabric and make this pattern. You have to promise to make this pattern, which means you go back to Wednesday's video and watch that to see how you make these little blocks and set them on point. The first person that's willing to do that and says, I volunteer as tribute, will get this sent to them. Now, once you get looking at the comments and if you see that you uh, followed those directions and your comment is before someone else that I had already chosen, I have no control over how those comments come in to that comment section. So the first one that I see in the order that I receive it, just say that one phrase. I volunteer as tribute <laughs> so i went really really wish i would have made this one instead of that one so i still want to see it made up but i don't want to do it i want one of you guys to do it and you could keep the quilt and keep the fabric whatever you have left over it's all yours so there you go the first one it's unusual to have a giveaway on Friday, isn't it? Well, I just, I just couldn't wait. I just couldn't wait till any other time. So, uh, Pat Sloan's Autumn Wonders. This is the block for this week. And I didn't quite get the effect. I think I should have uh, went a little darker on my so-called medium fabric because it does uh, blend a little bit in with the the background that I've been using. It's supposed to look like uh, you're looking down inside of two boxes and this would be the floor of the box. So are any of you getting that effect from this block? I've seen some out there on Facebook that are, are really, really good. You can really see the effect. But I also wanted to talk about this project a little bit because uh, we're getting close to the end. We have one more block. So next Wednesday is the last block. 
and I have been looking at the setting instructions that you get all the way from the beginning of the project and if anyone wants to make this project go to ilovetomakequilts.com that is Pat Sloan's blog and all the free patterns are out there for each of the blocks and the um, setting and, and all the all the information you need to finish it so I have been working on there are let me see if I can show you a picture I know a lot of you are making this but if you look at the in between the the rows you see some triangles there so she had us make half square triangles out of a dark and a light so I've chosen to use my dark uh, navy and my lighter pink salmon -y shade and then each block is going to get some sashing around it so you do five blocks in one color sashing and four in another and alternate so I'm going to use my pink on four blocks so it'd be like this one this one this one this one and then I'll use my gray on the other ones well, it's kind of a green it's a green gray so I got those all cut out and ready to go so when we get our next block I'll be able to start doing that I she's already started putting sashing on hers but I, I gotta wait until I see what this block is and as I'm looking at this I'm thinking that I need something something light something light like this one and this one to make this balance out well so we'll see we'll see what it is and then I'll make adjustments with that last block and then get them in the places that I want to put them so that's about all I got done this week it's been a little bit of a down week um, I just didn't get to the things I really really wanted to get to I got this video finished and uh, that little quilt finished and you know, I certainly wanted to keep going on this but the other projects have yet to be worked on this week, but the week is not over So we have today and Saturday Sunday So I'll be sure and get some things done over the weekend. Oh the horse panel quilt is at the long arm and it is getting long armed as we speak so I should be getting that back maybe next week sometime and I'll be able to show you a completely finished quilt so that is it for my neck of the woods and what I've been doing so now we'll go into what you've been doing okay our first one today is submitted by Dee Dee and if you remember she sent us a picture of her tote bag uh, that she made for her husband's workmate I believe it was and she decided to make a three-piece bag set to go along with it and she was going to kind of surprise the recipient with that and you see here she's done some amazing work with a really cool zipper on that one and then she's done some embroidery on the corners and added some other embellishments uh, there some cording and uh, the coordinating fabric that goes with the tote bag so this is a this is a wonderful set to receive so great job Dee Dee on putting that whole set together uh, to go with that wonderful tote bag that you made the next one is from Diane she says I've been enjoying your YouTube channel especially the September series on how to use panels and I look forward to seeing everyone's finished projects here is my recent 80 by 80 quilt using ombre fabric and the pattern is called Singularity. Beth Chandler did the long arm quilting and I went with a scrappy binding. Thanks again for all your tips and inspiration. Beautiful quilt. I really would like to try something with ombre in the future. This one's gorgeous. It has every color of the rainbow and you get that effect of uh, the center just moving away so that is really cool or you could look at it the opposite way that it's just getting bigger as it, it's coming towards you so that's a fantastic job Diane thanks for sharing that we have another one from Kayleen 
She says, hope you're having and had a wonderful glamping trip, which we did. I finished this quilt top today. Only two more tops to go before Christmas. This is Violet Crafts pattern called Atomic Starburst. Atomic Starburst done in Tula pink fabrics. The pattern didn't call for a border, but I love borders and almost always add them to make quilts larger. I made several mistakes that were lessons learned with this top. I didn't stick to the pattern layout and ended up losing the three starburst points along the bottom row. I do have plans to make another version with Tula Pink's line works in black and white, so I'll make sure and stick to the pattern layout next time for sure. Have a great week. Yes, Kayleen. I'm famous for messing around with patterns too, and sometimes it works out great and sometimes it doesn't. But I don't think it affects your quilt at all. I see what you're talking about because there's a lot more space at the top, between the top stars and the and the edge than at the bottom. But I don't I don't think it really detracts at all from it. And I have been looking at this pattern for a couple years now. And I think I need to try it. I think I need to try it. I think those stars are paper pieced, I think. Um, but yeah, I think it looks great with your border added to it. Uh, all coordinating and, and the Tula line. One of the Tula lines there. So that is a very good job and a little bit of a tedious project. So congratulations for getting that done. It's beautiful. Good job. The next one is from Diane, another Diane. Uh, I'm so excited on how this turned out. This is her own creation. This is how I use all the scraps that are accumulating in my sewing room. All blocks finished at 12 inches, and by turning the block, I never had to match a seam. Mm-hmm. I see that. I love scrappy quilts. I just love scrappy quilts. This is great. And she's using hers as uh, strips as well. That's what I've been trying to, to get to with my scraps, is just using strips and not doing the, uh, the crazy quilting too much because it takes so much time. But this is gorgeous. It's beautiful. I love it. Makes me want to get my scraps out. Okay, Michelle has sent us, I think, three quilts. She says, uh, on Monday, I was able to put most of these quilt tops together. The purple one is made from one layer cake and it will get a green, then a tan border, and the binding will be a dark purple. That'll be pretty with your purples and greens and blues, and uh, there's some tans in there. I see why you're gonna use the tan. Very pretty. That went together really quick, didn't it? And then she has one here out of a layer cake called Flourish, and a solid white layer cake. And it's getting a red and silver border and the binding will be black. Yes, can't beat a black, red, and white quilt. Very bright and cheery. And then there's another one at the bottom. She didn't say anything about it, but it looks like a three yard quilt. Uh, it's also black, red, and white. And it's got like a jumbo polka dot in there. Very nice, three quilts in a day. That's awesome. Great job, Michelle. Giselle has a three yard quilt. She says uh, it's 50 by 64 in a fall theme. Three yard quilt plus extra dark fabric for a wider border. The pattern is from Fabric Cafe. I made this for myself and quilted with the walking foot. I was planning on having it quilted but did not have enough backing fabric for the extra amount they require for the long arm. So, when all else fails, do the next best thing. Yeah, do it yourself. <laughs> Nothing wrong with straight line quilting. I love straight line quilting. I think it looks neat, it's classic, and you can put that on any style of quilt and it looks good. Love those pumpkins in there. That's a pretty print. Great job, Giselle. And I believe that's it. That's, what, that's all we have for this week. Thanks for uh, being patient with me for not having a video last Friday. But uh, here we are again uh, on a regular schedule program. So um, this weekend, I hope you all have plenty to do and get those projects out and, and plow through them and just take one at a time and, and get them going, get them done, whatever it is you need to do. And that's what I'm gonna do. And we will see you back here on Monday for Monday Quilt Chat. We'll have a, another mystery stash busting 
video for Wednesday and then back here again around uh, on Friday for finish it Friday so we're all busy we got things to do and so I'm just gonna let you get to it so we'll see you back here on Monday bye